The very first thing you should do to start the process is to get in contact with a lender to get pre-approved for a mortgage. You might also hear the term pre-qualification. Those are two different things. A pre-qualification is a very preliminary step where based on information you give a lender, they'll give you a price range that you could be approved for. In this step, the information you provided has not been verified. A pre-approval, on the other hand, digs a little deeper where you substantiate the information you provided with things like pay stubs, T4 slips and bank statements. Although a pre-approval does not guarantee a mortgage, this is what you want before you start looking for a home. Home values will rarely be dictated by the time of year, but more so by the number of homes available for sale to supply the number of buyers, the neighborhood it's in, and the location. 2021 is a great example. Prices peaked for over a year going through all seasons with no relief due to lack of homes available for sale compared to the number of buyers out there. Timing the market is very difficult if not near impossible. Remember that real estate is a long game. Over time it's much more likely for your property to appreciate in value rather than depreciate. So the sooner you buy, the sooner you can start to build equity. In general, if you're a first time buyer, you'll need 5% of the purchase price to put towards a down payment on the mortgage. If you don't have that money set aside, there are programs for first time buyers to help them come up with a down payment, uh, such as withdrawing from RRSPs without penalty. Other costs to consider when buying a home are home inspection fees, closing costs such as lawyer fees, land transfer fee, which is 1% of either the purchase price or the assessed value of the home, whichever is higher, and adjustments that could be made at closing, such as reimbursing the seller for prepaid property taxes. It's estimated that you could need up to another 4% of the purchase price towards closing costs. So as a very rough example, if you're looking to buy a $300,000 house, you could need up to $27,000, including your mortgage down payment and closing costs. A seller's market is when there's not enough inventory to supply buyer demand, therefore giving sellers the advantage when it comes to negotiating price and conditions. This can be a challenging market for buyers because there is a lot of competition. If you're not willing to offer aggressively, it will likely take you a while to buy a home. In a buyer's market, the opposite is true. There is more supply than the number of buyers. This puts buyers at an advantage because they have less competition and more choices for homes, which will usually allow for more negotiation with sellers. There's a calculation we use that measures how long the current inventory would supply the current demand in months if there were no new listings. The general rule is that if there is enough supply for only four months or less, it's considered a seller's market. If there's enough supply for eight months or more, it's a buyer's market. And if it falls in the middle, at five to seven months, it's what is considered a balanced market where neither side has an advantage or a disadvantage. In general, when you're working with a real estate agent to buy a home, there will be no direct cost to you. The real estate fees are paid by the seller. 
There can be exceptions to this. For example, if you're interested in buying a home that is being sold privately, the seller may or may not be interested in paying a commission to the real estate agent helping you. In this case, you could make arrangements to pay the agent yourself for their guidance and help in navigating the process. I have found that in most cases, private sellers are willing to take care of this fee if it helps them sell their house. If you're selling a home, the fees can vary. They can be a percentage of the total sale price of the house, with the most common being 5%, depending on the location, price, and other services involved, or could even be a flat fee. These fees are generally only due at closing and come out of the proceeds of the sale of the house. There are different ways to handle this depending on the current market, your specific situation, and your financial capabilities. The most common scenario is to make an offer on the home you would like to buy contingent on the sale of your current home. Depending on the market, this may or may not be appealing to the sellers. In a slow market where there's less activity, the seller may consider this option. However, in a seller's market where there are many buyers and lots of activity, it's not as likely for the sellers to accept this offer. A second option is to carry both properties until your current house is officially sold. It's not nearly as common and won't be possible for everyone since it can be quite a financial burden that many people wouldn't be able to take on. For this scenario to work, you would also have to be very well established financially in order for the bank to approve a second mortgage if you have one on your current home or you would have to own your current home outright. In an ideal world, your home is listed with an accepted offer and all conditions met with a closing date that will allow you enough time to find a new home and align both closings within a few days of each other for a smooth transition. An offer will be written by the buyer's agent and will contain details of the purchase including price offered, ideal closing date, and any conditions the buyers have as part of the purchase. Common conditions are any inclusions that should be part of the sale, think appliances for example, whether or not the, they would like the home to be inspected, and whether or not the purchase is contingent on financing. It could also include any work uh, or repairs the buyers would like done before closing. A condition can really be anything as long as it states who is asking for it, who is responsible for completing it, who is responsible for the cost, what is the deadline to complete it, and what is the consequence if it's not completed.